Hey folks, Fatty with the Farm here. Back at you with a really cool, very old gun. This gun happens to be a Sharps four barrel Derringer, colloquially called a pepper box. You can see the four barrels there. Now, this gun is chambered in 22 short, so as you can see, the gun overall is really, really tiny. This gun's around five inches long, a little over three and an eighth, about a three and an eighth inches tall. Don't really know the thickness, but you know, not very thick. Now, I'll, I'll pop up the actual numbers right around here, but to give a comparison on size, let me show you one of my other Derringers, my Bond Arms 45410. You can see this one is unloaded. All guns in this video have been danger checked to be unloaded. You can see. The Sharps is very, very tiny compared to the Bond Arms, but then again, it shoots a vastly different cartridge. Let's get this out of the way, because a lot of people don't have this. Let's get in a gun that a lot of people have had experience with, a GI 45 1911. You can see, again, the 1911 dwarfs the Sharps. So let's get this out of the way. Now, like I said, it is in 22 short, and I'll show you the barrels. You know, the inside of the chambering. You notice there, and I'll drop that, that I had to cock the hammer to get the barrels open. And the unique thing about that is this hammer actually rotates. That's the revolving portion. And I say revolving because when Sharps actually patented this gun, or the design of this gun, in 1849, it had a patent number 69 or 60 as a revolver even though the only thing that revolved was the hammer. But that's the only way he could get it as a patent. Now, these guns did not begin, you know, production until 1859, and that's when Sharps became the sole owner of the Fairmont Rifle Works, not Sharps Rifle Co. So these were not made by Sharps Rifle Co. These were made by the Fairmont Rifle Works by Sharps. But the second patent actually came in 1859, and its patent number was 22753. So, you can see here, you know, you got all the markings, C-Sharps and Co., Philadelphia, PA. C-Sharps patent, 1859. That's where the second patent comes in. Now, approximately 85,000 of these were made between 1859 and 1868. This one serial number is 23,000 mark. So, I estimate this was made around 1861, and that puts the gun at 155 years old as of 2016. And I say 1861 because in 1862, a Mr. William Hankins joined the firm, and all the guns, you know, did not say C Sharps, it said C Sharps and Hankins. And I believe they said it's uh, C Sharps and Hankins instead of C Sharps and Co. right on the right side of the gun. Now, Three models of these were made. I believe this is a 1A. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe it's a 1A. There was a 2 and a 3. The 3 was the larger of the, all of them. It was in 32 caliber, and it was an iron frame. And it had a uh, release for the slot or the barrel set right here, a little button. Now, sadly, the partnership did dissolve in 1867, and then a fourth bird's head model was released out of the, you know, Sharps Pepper Box, and it had, I believe it was just a different grip and maybe a few minor changes up here. Now, a lot of people think, okay, 22 short, a gun that fits in your palm, what's the recoil like? Well, let's roll in some shooting video, and we'll be back at the table here in just a moment.
now that we're back from the shooting portion, I just wanted to show you a comparison of how small a 22 short is. This is a CCI 22 short. This is a standard 22 long rifle. So you can see, it's butt to butt, a little bit of a size and difference, or difference in size, sorry. This is a Hornady Critical Defense 9mm, so you can see a lot of difference there. Let's just get that out of the way. Now, from my research, I believe these are like Gouda Percha wood grips. I, I, I don't know exactly how to pronounce that or if that's even the correct wood that this is. But this gun is fun as heck to shoot. Uh, you know, these guns were, you know, back again in the 1860s, you know, late 1850s, early to mid, and kind of late 1860s. These were meant as pocket guns, little little vest guns. Uh, you know, back then they didn't have 9mm. And the only way to make a multi-shot, you know, larger caliber gun is it had to be a much bigger gun. They didn't have the technology like we do to have, you know subcompact and micro compact 9 millimeters or 40s or 45s but one the cartridges really didn't exist and two they didn't have the technology to even do that however I wouldn't stand in front of this thing yes it's is 22 short but yes it can kill you if it hits the right spot I'm crazy not stupid I might be stupid I don't know however the recoil on this gun as you can see from the video is minuscule it's a 22 short, you know, you're not going bang, you know, having a ridiculous amount of recoil. And that's good because, again, this gun's not meant to be, you know, you know, knocking, you know, dogs down or birds out of the sky. Whereas, that's what this can do. But this gun is a very fun gun to shoot. And, again, you know, being that this gun is a, around 155 years old by my estimation based on the serial number range, the fact that it doesn't say uh, uh, Sharps and Hankins on the side, I believe this gun to be made in 1861, so it would make it 155 years old. If it was made in, uh, you know, 1860, 1859, it would be, you know, either 156 or 157 years old as of 2006, if I did my math right. I did go to public school in Oklahoma. I may have done my math wrong, but I'm pretty sure the comments down below will correct me. But folks, I really like this gun. My only complaint is these sights are terrible. It's like a little tiny V cut or like little cut, and then you have a little bead on the end. So, but again, this gun's not meant for long range shooting. It does have nice, you know, knurling on the uh, hammer spur. And I just think it's so cool. When I saw this at the Wanamaker Gun Show in Tulsa, I, I was like, I have to have this. Because I just think that's really, really neat that the hammer itself is the part that revolves. I mean, that's pretty darn cool. And this actually, when I purchased this, it became my oldest gun by around 60 years or so. Uh, my next one would be my Sar or Savage 1907 made in 1910. So this is much, much older, around, you know, 50 years or so. Uh, but folks, I hope you like this video. I'm going to roll in some slow-mo video of this gun just for funs and giggles here at the very end. But folks, if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, if you know where I can get an authentic either original holster if one was ever made or a period holster for this gun please leave that comment in the comment you know boxes below I would be greatly appreciative because I would like to get an original holster or a period style holster for this gun just for funs and giggles I really wouldn't carry it it would just be nice to have all the original stuff with it so folks again this has been Fatty with a firearm with the four barrel 22 Derringer sharps from the Fairmont Rifle Works have a nice day.